And Dave Kekich spoke, well, that's, that's me. I, I spoke a little bit on about what you can do now. What you can do to open, I mean, we have a window of opportunity, and it's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's this, this wide, but we want to open this, widen this as wide as possible for us to get through. It's a bridge to tomorrow's future technologies. And a lot of the things we're talking about now, I wish to God they were available. I'd love to get, you know, go to have uh, Ralph's and Rob's uh, nanobots go in and fix all, all my cells. You know, it's just not in the cards yet. But uh, until it happens, what do we do? And I've identified basically seven sim simple steps. And you should all have, a, at least at the tables, you should all have a book that outlines the seven simple steps that you can take right now to add five to 20 years to your lives, increase your odds of being alive when these, are, uh, these technologies are being developed. And it's something that, like I said before, uh, a lot of this is old knowledge, but the motivation to apply it to your lives now should be infinitely greater because the rewards are not just an extra 5, 10, or 20 years. The rewards are infinite. You can get this book uh, at Amazon.com. If you like a hard copy, I, Maximum Life Foundation makes, I don't know, 5 or 6 bucks. It's about $16. But you can get a free download at maxlife.org. You see the website on the bottom, the URL at the bottom. You can get a free download there. It won't cost you a penny. And this book is priceless. Not just because it's mine. I just took ideas that I learned from a lot of really smart people and put them in a book. And now what do we do if everything else fails? Ralph Merkel gave a great speech on cryonics, and that is, uh, that is low temperature storage of an animal or human being after legal death. It is not freezing the dead. The definition of death is a moving target. It used to be when your heart stops. Uh, now we have resuscitation, mouth to mouth, you know, all kind of resuscitation. Then it used to be and still is when your brain waves stop. Well, we found that it takes days for all the cells in your body to die. Dying is a gradual process. And if we can stop that process, in the nick of time and, and hold it in suspended animation, then we've preserved or hopefully preserved your, who you are, your mind, your personality, uh, your knowledge, everything you've got between your ears. The rest of the body is not as important. Um, but as Ralph said, cryonics is an experiment. They, it, really, it really depends on a couple of sciences. One of them is cryobiology. There's absolutely no controversy about cryobiology uh, story, storage of very low temperatures. It's a well-respected uh, discipline. Uh, and also neurobiology. The, the intent is to, re, is to preserve the, the, the neurons, the, the brain, like you do hearts or anything else. This is a no-brainer. I mean, uh, hardly anybody signs up for it because it sounds so far out. Nanotechnology would be a huge one to come in and do repair the damage that might have occurred prior to death, legal death and uh, with any of the freezing death. Um, we've come up with a um, way to vitrify the cells uh, we talked about for cell storage. So you don't have, your cells don't uh, implode, they don't, uh, they don't crack from crystallization. And then of course we have a, a regenerative medicine or stem cell organ replacement to resuscitate people that go into cryonic suspension. Nobody wants to be uh, cryonically suspended. Nobody wants to go in and be go, go into this big stainless steel tube, but it's better to me than some, as some people say, getting eaten by the worms or getting burned and cremated. So um, this is something that is backup as insurance. The only, the only tr true health insurance or life insurance. Okay, so the idea at the heart of our strategy is to live long enough to live as long as you want and to look and feel and great endlessly, endlessly. Um, in the, in the sense of the word that, you know, we're going to get knocked off by an accident maybe one, at one time or another, but let's, let's address those problems later on. So two bridges, reprogram your biochemistry starting now. And you can go to Life Extension Express, go through the seven steps to show you how to reprogram them. And this last point is critical, and I want this to burn in your brain. Medical advances are accelerating. We've got a couple of people predicting, a very well-respected scientists are predicting, that within 15 years, the age of your projected death 
your maximum lifespan, no matter what age you are, is going to be moving away from you rather than having you close in on it. We're going to be adding more than one year to your expected lifespan every calendar year. So it's like the sands of time. You have an hourglass there, Greta. It's like the sands of time flowing up into the top part of the hourglass instead of, instead of my squares ticking away. So again, it's, it, I mean, I can't, I can't stress how important it is to be alive when this happens. It's going to be exactly 15 years. I know, probably not. It could be sooner. It could be a little later. But I mean, this is something we need to shoot for. And at least we get in the holding pattern until we get everything else developed. Now, um, the worst case that we're going to see here if you follow the advice that you live, and, and when I say you, I'm talking to the world, because I want this message to get out to the world. Worst case, if you follow the things that we're doing here, you're going to add, if you're average, five to 20 years to your life. Better, though, is a bridge to the future technologies. And we're going to strategize today on funding the research to increase your odds, everybody's odds, accelerate the progress, because if we don't, we lose 100,000 lives a day unnecessarily, prematurely. Our objectives, deliver the message to the universe. Everybody needs to know what's going on here, folks. Uh, getting the, raising the funding, or at least not raising the funding. You're not here to raise the money. We're here to raise ideas on how to raise the money. We're going to strategize and get some creative concepts. And then, of course, reach longevity, escape velocity. This is for our personal survival. And we maintain ourselves, but we need to pull all the stops for this next 15 years and actually a little bit beyond, as you'll see in a moment. Once that happens, once we're demonstrating this capability, you watch Wall Street, the flood of money coming from Wall Street will be like something you've never seen before. So if the, if the, the budgets that we're going to project here aren't enough to complete this, and it won't be, or, 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 or make it perfect, we're going to see so much money coming into this industry that it's going to make your head spin. Why? Because we're going to be able to demonstrate age reversal. Now, where's the money going today? The money, for the most part, is going into what I call deathist industries. Tobacco and alcohol and fast foods, uh, God, you know, soft drinks, alcoholic, soft drinks probably actually more than alcoholic. Um, they're great investments, otherwise people wouldn't be making them. You may be making these investments unconsciously if you're invested in a hedge fund or a mutual fund or some sort of retirement plan or maybe even directly investing. Uh, Warren Buffett made all this money on Coca-Cola. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad investments. All I'm saying is that these investments are killing you. And I'm suggesting that, I'm not even suggesting we upset the economy by yanking all the money. I couldn't do it anyway, although I would like to see tobacco disappear, for example. But, uh, but what, doesn't it make sense to just commit a small portion of our investment portfolios into something that's actually good for you and that would ultimately have a possibility of, make, of being way, way, way more profitable? So what's getting funded now? Venture capitalists are typically not investing in this industry. The exit horizons or the time you cash in your money is typically a little bit too far off in the future. In fact, way far off in the future. It's also very speculative. Uh, VCs typically pick the low-hanging fruit. They want something that's going to show them a profit within a few years. And in biotech, maybe 5%, it, go, it varies, uh, goes to startups in biotech. So that's really not a viable way to go to start later on, maybe. And um, the government is, doesn't recognize aging as a disease. Sure, they have the NIA. They put money into, they put billions into age research, aging research, but primarily it's for maintenance. It's not for prevention. It's not for uh, reversing aging. And until they recognize it as a, as a disease, or it, and, and even if they don't do that, or until they start spending money and doing it logically and responsibly, which is another trick that uh, they're not quite capable of, seemingly, uh, it's up to people like us. So I'm just asking, how about cure instead of care? The government's really concerned with care caring for us until we go to our graves. I want to eliminate that grave part. 